is a band fade, detective. Band fade, detective agency. Oh, fade, sweetheart. Oh, hello, sir. What are you doing? Having breakfast, Abby. Breakfast? But it's 7.30 in the p.m. Well, it's a topsy-turvy world, sweetheart. What was the problem, sir? Oh, uh, a gold key to the door of her apartment. She gets to figure out what it unlocks. Very complex case, Abby. Greed, passion, puts of ambition, hate, love, vengeance, and murder. The whole gamut. It was uh, ghastly every now and then. Well, Sam, maybe we ought to put off the report for morning when you're feeling fresh. Oh, it's very good to look at, sweetheart, but I'd like to get it off my chest now. Thank you. If you uh, want to help, just be at your desk. I don't say anything when I come in. Just be there. Sam, you sound so serious. Could be, sweetheart. We'll see. I'll be right down to dictate my report on the gold key caper. <laughs> Powers up, star your face. Wild Rose brings to the air the greatest private detective of them all in The Adventures of Sam Fate. Date January 25, 1948. New homicide detail, San Francisco Police. Attention to Detective Lieutenant Sunday from Samuel Spade. License under 1756. Subject. The Gold Key Caper. Dear Dundee, it started as these things usually do in my office when Hetty Farine, a doll of my other girl, and eased in, closed the door behind her, and leaned against it. There's a girl outside. A uh, client or a client? Her name is Wanda Farr. Has she uh, come a long way to see you? I don't think she's sitting here. I know, sweetheart. She never did. Sure is. Okay. Will you please come in, Miss Farr? Uh, right here, Miss Farr. You're so kind, Mr. Fair. I can see I've come to the right place. Yes, okay. Uh, that, uh, that'll be all, Mr. Fair. Mm-hmm. And now then, uh, what can I do for you, Miss Vaughn? Well, I, I haven't a great deal of money. I've brought a little cash with me. Would 300 be enough for me? I uh, won't haggle with you, Miss Vaughn. Come back. Now, uh, what's the story that goes with it? How much do you know about a man named Dundee? About as much as the police know. You know more? I'm afraid I don't even know that much. I didn't even know what he was until one evening three years ago. That was the last time I saw him. The police came and asked me. I was too shocked. But I felt I could stand by him. As I remember, the rap was three to five years breaking in at him. Yes, I, I promised to wait for him. But you couldn't quite make it. Well, in a way, you're probably right. When I heard he was coming out of prison... Oh, I just can't think. Have you uh, thought of leaving town? Oh, it wouldn't make any difference. He'd find me wherever I went. You can't say that I'm blaming. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> You're afraid of me, young. No, I'm not dangerous. Not yet. Are you always dangerous? Oh, never. That depends. Oh. Yeah. On how many other staff to handle, like this county for police, and how many other staff to help you get out from under. Really? There must be some other type of detective. Okay, here's your money. Well, I won't go. You can't turn me away like this. A bowl of things I told you. You haven't any right to when I put my trust in you. That's a lousy action. Sit down. Well, I'll look at it. What do you want me to do? Well, he's arriving in San Francisco without me. He'll come to my pocket for anything. He's ready to I haven't been seen him or even out of the That by itself is enough to make him kill him, man. Oh, you knew, Johnny. Well, I don't. You said you didn't until the cops came in. But I didn't. I didn't know you were in the bar. I just thought he was a gambler like anybody. And then about his back. I never see his back. Just go crazy. I wanted to see him as long as I was him up out of the prison. And I was going to write and then tell him in prison. But then I was afraid he'd break out and make things worse for himself. But now... Now you've really got a face. Yeah, but I can't. I'm afraid. Uh-huh, and you want me to hold a gun on him while you give him the air. Oh, you say it like that. Make him feel But I just can't go back here. I can't. I just knew that you would fly and talk to him. And I... You're not afraid of anything. What do you expect? 
Twelve thirty-four, then. Clock on twenty-one. What time do you do it? It's not getting on three. I'll be there a quarter up. Budget four times. Long, short, long, short. No, no, don't use that. I don't want to make any mistakes. Yes, yeah. take this. Step yourself. Go, T. Johnny. Forever. Uh, don't worry, Angel. Don't worry. You can put a new name on there. This one's not in grade very deep. <laughs> drawn a heavy fragrance clung to everything she touched. The chair she sat in, my glass with her lipstick on it for 300 bucks, even the gold key. I rubbed it up against my coat plate. The name didn't come off, it only shone brighter. I threw it across the room just to see if it was bounce. It did. And when I walked over to pick it up, there were two keys, or at least one and a half. The gold tank had been hollowed out, and the key that put it inside it was wrong again, Dundee. Not a glass key, a brass key with a number on it, 322, nothing else. I wanted this county for taste of living a double life, or at least one and a half. I was still wondering when I put the brass key back into its hiding place and used the gold one to unlock the door of Wanda's apartment. The room was full of her perfume, but she wasn't there. Johnny Batiste was. He was cleaning the prison dirt out of his fingernails with a shiny new spring blade knife. Get that key. What for? You're in. What's Wanda? Change your mind if you don't want to see her. Who changed it for? I did. I told her she shouldn't ought to marry under the wrong set. So give me that key and blow. Where is she in here? I told you to blow if you don't want to see her. Oh, Mr. Yourself, you're sir happy. I didn't rot in that safe hotel three years to get pushed around. Why do you think I took that rap? You took it for her? You're crazy. She was through with you before you went up. Go on talking like that. I'll cut you. I'll cut you real bad, Copper. Johnny, I don't want to hurt you. I'll try. Good night, Johnny. Come on. The first thing you ought to learn about civilian life, Johnny, is don't jump somebody until you know what it's all about. What if she tell you? Forget it. You'll get this cheaper than I did. But she's three years older. (laughs) So am I. Listen, Johnny. Here's my card. If there's any way I can help you, let me know, will you? I mean it. Hey, you got a heart, sir. They gave me 50 bucks and they put me out the gate, but I dropped it in the poker game down at 6th and Mission. Right off the bus. Stuck it. Johnny Dick. You need some dough, Johnny? No, nothing that ain't mine. Hey, that key ain't mine. My name's on it. They couldn't do nothing to me if I had hopped that for days. Not a man of 15. That's not a goal. Hey, give me a place to flop until I get my feet on it again. Yeah, like you say, your name's on it. Here, take it. Hey, you can have your knife, too. Good, all that guy. I'm sorry for the things I said. Hey, wait a minute. Where's Wanda? I don't know. I don't want to see it. So long, sucker. Yes, and, and 
And that way, I was protecting him, so he didn't hurt me. I only did a bit, and he couldn't be the cause. Well, it's nothing very on the little bit, Oh, oh, but if you only knew what it's been like, and then there, and that dark, not knowing what he was doing to you. Oh, 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 uh, about that gold key angle, I think you better change the lock on your door. What? I gave it to Johnny. You? Oh, no, you fool. Oh, he was broke. He made it. Oh, where did you get a crazy idea like that? Where did you get those great, big, beautiful lies? Sandy, sir. But I am. We're engaged, aren't we? Oh, stop that. Listen, if I don't have that key back by midnight, I'll just... Well, I'm not going to be here. Get to you, You come back to kill me. Get out of sight. Get out of sight. I'll take care of you. Neither one was Johnny but Steve. They brushed past me and entered the room without a word and stood there with their faces hanging out. So we were giving each other the silent treatment. I sized them up. The larger size, I recognized some newspaper pictures. He was a big sand and gravel man, and rumor had it that a stretch of paving outside the town contained the bodies of 18 other sand and gravel men who had bid against them for the contract and stumbled into a rock crusher. Name? Mike Malloy. The uh, musician with him put his viola case down on the sofa and opened it up. No, 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 no. This isn't the man, Nathan. Why, Jackie, what he's doing here? Well, let's sit down and finish that comic book that boy. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm quite Mr. Fred, I told his father to hire you. Hadn't he, Bill? No, Jack, good. I brought along my bodyguard here just in case. Where is he? I sent him to the movies. Why, of course. You see, Johnny was eating? Yeah, he dropped him. And he didn't, he didn't make any trouble? No. Was he supposed to? Uh, there's no point in our talking and searching. Johnny Batiste used to work for me. Maybe he was one of his men, wasn't he? Why, right, Billy, I'm not. Things have changed. Johnny isn't the man he used to be. But I've always taken care of those certainly loyally. I uh, thought we weren't uh, talking to you. Believe me, Mr. Spade, I only want to say Johnny is something to tell. Is he threatening to jump into one of your rock records? <laughs> What's that, boy? He's got a sense of humor. <laughs> I'm sorry, I may have been. I was misinformed about you, Mr. Spade. I was led to believe that you were the man to help my fiancé and myself out of this embarrassing situation. Your fiancé? Uh, uh, Wanda? The Fox? Yes? Yes, it's fiancé. I'll be absolutely frank with you, Spade. I had hoped by bringing you and Johnny Steve together under circumstances that you might be forced to kill him. In self-defense, of course, my apologies. Oh, it would have been the merciful way out for Johnny, and it would have saved many lives. I know Johnny Batiste. He will try to get back on top. He'll stop that nothing. I believed them, and it was no mistake. That's why I almost hope they didn't know where Johnny was, but they did. After they left one at the park, they crossed the street, went into the neon light at Barn Grill. By the time I got downstairs, they were on their way out again with Johnny in the middle. They didn't look where he wanted to go, but they dragged him into Malloy's limousine, and he went. I did, too. I landed on the Embarcadero at the Harborview Hotel. By the time I got into the lobby, Johnny and his two guards had disappeared up a ratty-looking flight of stairs. I started up after them, but then I stopped cold. When I got to the top of the stairs, I saw where the number one burst had gone. It had raked the ceiling and taken every light bulb in the corridor. See the flashes from the Tommy gun of somebody back into the hall from one of the rooms still pumping lead. I'm getting out of here. I'm getting out of here. Hey, hey, who's that? Who's that? He either saw or heard me. I flopped down on my belly and tried to work my way into the tenth of an eighth map in the crummy carpet. Ah! I made like I'd been hit, but I couldn't quite manage the death rattle. When I heard the gunman run down the hall toward the rear of the building, I rose courageously to my hands and knees and crawled the rest of the way down the corridor and looked into the smoke-filled room. The air tasted like burned powder, but it smelled like blood. I swallowed my insides and went in. There were eight of them. I'll spare you the details, Sandy. You saw them after they were cleaned up. I needed some fresh air, and I needed it quick. Oh, poor darling. What was that place then? 
Why were you there? Why were you? Well, you poor thing. I came after you. Shut up. I want some answers. I don't want explanations. I don't want excuses. And if I catch you using what you know you're doing to me to snag your way out of this one, I'll... What have I done to you? I did first, Johnny, then Mike, and now you. You're starting again. It's the last time. Sam, I... I'm sorry. What do you want to know? Are you in love with Johnny? But I told you no. Mike Malloy? No. Are you going to marry Malloy? What was in that room? Eight dead men. What else? A lot of blood and pot of smoke. Now I'll see if I'm going to marry Malloy. Okay, that's all I wanted to know. I'll see you later, Angel. Uh-huh. 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 Oh, Bing, I was just leaving. Come back later. You're not leaving, and I'm not coming back later. Get back in the room. Now, <laughs> uh, listen to this, Bing. I hired you as a bodyguard for my fiancé, Miss Farr. What do you come off pushing your way in here with a gun like this? Have your license revoked so fast to make your head sway up yourself. I'm a little sick of this thing. Hey, I warn you, stay out of this. What's that? You know, Johnny the Geek. Hello, Johnny. I'm going to get you working on it. You talk? What's this going on? Ask Johnny. He knows. All right, I will. Move over here where I can watch you. Keep your hands behind your neck. It's a lot. That's going to cost you more than your life. Shut up. Now, oh, Johnny, listen to me. This is important. Move your right hand, but yes. You frame yourself on the breaking and you have to cool off from a big one, right? Okay, I see, Johnny. Murder? No. Robbery? Mm-hmm. How big? Five thousand? Fifty? Five hundred thousand. That's payroll job. Make a bill to summer nineteen forty four. That right, Johnny? How do I go through with this fast? I can give it to you. If you think it'll do you any good? I promise you it won't. Johnny got himself set up on that free to five year rat, partly for the reason you say, and partly because he didn't want to kill you with the rest of the boys. He cooked up this transfer scheme of his, this gold key, that hotel room to throw us off the track. They can think the loot was hidden there. You sure it isn't? Positive. I bought that hotel and ripped it to pieces room by room. So you cooked up a couple of pretty crude schemes of your own to sweat it out of Johnny. First you thought you could throw him into killing me. When that didn't work, you had your boy Naples knock off the opposition boards into the peace mob so you could hold a whole master over his head. Who do you think you could settle that to? I think I'll start with you. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> you laugh until you feel better, Johnny. Don't get jumpy. Yeah, I know it's me. I'll start doing the other one. Doing here? Where's the boy? Out. Yeah. What do you want? I want to talk to you, pigeon. Who's the pigeon? Nobody but you, Naples. Or if you think somebody else is going up for that slaughter in room 322. Uh, Johnny got them guys. That's the boy. I asked the boss. He said you did. You're fucking. Johnny bargained for a written statement by Malloy alibying Johnny. The cops have got it now. They'll believe it. Malloy's a big citizen, so you're the only pigeon left. Uh, that's what you think. Where is he? Wait here. I'll bring him to you. <laughs> Left Naples standing there in the vestibule waiting for Malloy. Then I hoisted with Johnny out of my back and left Malloy waiting for Naples. He went out the back way. I ran to the freight elevator and watched the floor indicator moving around. I believe it was between six and seven when I heard a familiar sound of the Malloy apartment. Oh, it's 
exactly right. I didn't tell her I didn't have a heart. We uh, talked some more and spoke to Marshmallows. Well, uh, anyway, what I'm getting at, uh, Sunday, is this. Uh, some jerk from the DA's office informs me that you want her for questioning as an accessory before the fact. In my opinion, this angle of the case requires more uh, personal research, and with all modesty, I think that I am the man for the job, and will be, as long as you think I have the 500 grand. And if I do have it, Lieutenant, watch out for your bag. Period. And it will be. Oh. 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 Yes, sir. Well, how do you? Have I won it? The $500,000? Oh, what is the business? How can you be so calm about it? Right there, sweetheart. There's every nook and cranny for treasury hawk shots, and I'll give you a bullet cup. Private, of course. <laughs> Oh, this is a mess, and it's all your fault. I'm just a mess of nerves worrying about that money. How can you see that your mother and Mr. Dogg are gone? Hey, Mr. Baxter. Uh, besides, Sam, it's not hard now. I think we can fix it. And if I grow up, it's just the yard. You worry? No more, my sweet. Happy. Didn't you see the ticket? Can you give it a dollar, lady? Oh, of course you will. Want another hand? Yes, we did. Where is it, Sam? Listen, my dear, you can hear There never was on any 500 grand as far as Johnny but see. You can have anything to do with that robber. He invented the whole caper, including the whole his book is about the gold key. Now you ask me why? Why? Wow. To, <laughs> to keep himself out of the Lord's block crutch, you see. Well, he was resting safely for three years in San Quentin. But why? was driving himself crazy, following that gold key, and trying to stick up a half a million that wasn't even there. He figured by the time he got out, the lawyer would be crazy enough to overplay his hand. And he was right. But bless him. Well, Sam, if you ask me, it wasn't a gold key that drove my life crazy. Oh. Well, I'm getting out of it's not my place to advise you, You know what I mean. Good night, sir. Good night, brother. 